a Shunammite. Fellow Paterians and beloved in the Lord, we encourage you to support the Nanaseyo Pokusakodia Ministries by sending the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ throughout Ghana, Africa, Middle East, Europe, America and the rest of the world. You can help spread the gospel by being a Shunammite, a kingdom investor and a covenant partner. All you have to do is send an email to prophetshunamite at gmail.com with your name, address, phone number and country of residence and voila, registration is completed. So become a Shunammite today. After registration, simply commit a specific amount to be used for God's work and grow in giving. Kindly make your monthly contributions through any of our payment portals on the screen. At Potter City, we are committed to fulfilling sound biblical standards using your contributions faithfully and wisely in accordance with God's word. Join the gospel train as we send the word to the ends of the earth. The just shall live by faith. Without faith, you are bound to fail. This is what Paul wrote to the epistles on. He started Romans chapter 1 verse 17. He came back and turned the church in Rome. And he said, now listen to me. I'm telling you this. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. It is written that just shall live by faith. Habakkuk said his faith. Paul said by faith. So the just shall not live by complaint. One of the things that stopped the Israel from entering the promise is murmuring. Murmuring, 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 murmuring. The things you said that nobody is there but you say them these days karma is very difficult hey the devil move all the difficult demons on your life if you are christian it's not everything you are permitted to say if you are a child of god listen it's not everything you are permitted your bible said let the weak say what so go say if you when you are weak you are not permitted to say i'm weak for some reason let the poor say what there is no money in your pocket I don't know how you are going to get the next me but god said don't say it Faith is just repeating what God is saying. I am not lying. If there's anything, go and blame God. God said, I shouldn't say I'm poor. So there's no money in my pocket, but excuse me. I am the richest guy in the church. I am the most loaded guy in the church. And let the poor say, I am rich. If you pick this one and you work with it, your fasting will produce meaningful results, unchallenging results, and shaking testimonies. Now they just shall live by faith. But this is the key. If you start living by faith and you draw back, my soul will have no pleasure in you. So faith must not be a definition. It must be a lifestyle. Because the Bible says you must live by it. It means that you sleep by faith. You marry by faith. You raise children by faith. You write examination by faith. And it, what is faith? It's the vital link between God and man. What is faith? It's the spiritual force that connects the visible with the invisible. What is faith? It's practical expression of confidence in God and His way. You practically express confidence in what God has said and what He has written down. What is faith? It's not a philosophy. It's not an ideology. It's a living force. So faith is a force. How do I know it's a force? It divides the sea. How do I know it's a force? It puts children in the womb of a 90 years woman. The Bible says by faith, Sarah herself receives strength to conceive seed. It's a living force because everything has a source. And the source of faith is God's word. So it's a living force. Draw from a living word to produce living proofs. Hey! Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 2. By it, the elders obtain good report. So it's a producer of good report. So the hospital might give wrong report, but faith can change it. Today, may your heart be receptive to faith. The one that is living by faith can never be put to shame. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down flat. By faith, no Buddhists are no Bakata, no caterpillar. Just shouting and believing in your shout. The supernatural forces went to oppression. 
a wall at the size of this room seven chariots can run on it and shall bring it down so a faith shouting can send sickness away it can eliminate cancer it can eliminate diseases the church shall live by faith it will add color to your christian life it will make you shine in the midst of darkness it is the light under the tunnel where there is faith there is hope where there is hope there. so when daniel went to the lion it was faith that shut the mouth of the lion i can hear the lion say you can't touch me i'm a child of god and they stop the mouth of lion whether physical lion family lions abusian lions faith can stop them because some of you don't have physical lion but you have human lions in your family you have human lions in your father's house human lions in your mother's house but may your faith stop them some of you have lions in your office they are hated they hate you they don't like you they don't wish you well haters all over but faith stops the mouth of lions
blessings of the Lord will be upon your life. The blessings of the Lord will be upon your marriage. The blessings of the Lord will be upon your ministry. We lift up your voice and pray. And the, the, the opposite of a curse is a blessing. The opposite of a curse is a blessing. And live her the red is the celebrator. The lady brings up a cup of the red palm. The red 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 Ready <laughs> you lift up your voice and pray. You pray for the manifestation. The manifestation of the blessings of the Lord upon your life. You lift up your voice and pray. 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 Let the blessings of the Lord manifest in your life. Let the blessings of the Lord manifest in your ministry. Let the blessings of the Lord manifest in your marriage. The blessings of the Lord that makes one creature and unknown souls to nature. The blessings of the Lord that makes one creature and unknown souls to nature. The blessings of the Lord that makes one creature and unknown souls to nature. The blessings of the Lord that makes one creature and unknown souls to nature. 
Please be on your feet. Please be on your feet. Open your mouth and pray. As you are about to step into generational blessing, Lord, mark me for blessing in the name of Jesus.
Tonight, mark me for a blessing, generational blessing, Lord. The Let's go. 
in the spirit. Yes, sir. I hear the traffic has come down. Is it true? So why are you quiet? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. How to get used to it now. This is the worst traffic in the whole world. Uh, Bram Bram Road. Uh, in my estimation. Well, anyway, lift up your two hands. God bless you for passing through the rain to come. Amen. Um, did it rain only in Portes or it rain in town? Mm -hmm. I see. Did it rain in your house? Yes. I hope it's not flooded. Okay. Because uh, sometimes it depends on where you live. You don't need a car. You need a canoe. When there's rainy season. Hallelujah. But thank God. Amen. Amen. Once again, lift your hand. Lord, speak to me in the way that in a very special way. Speak to me. Amen. Yeah, lift your two hands and pray, Lord, speak to me. In the language I will understand. Hope you understand the entrance of your way. The entrance of your way. It gives understanding to the soul. Oh, speak to me. Let me have an unforgettable encounter. Oh, yeah, that was shot to son. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus was explaining the parable of the sower, and he said, The word is the seed. Yeah, the word is the seed. Somebody say seed. 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 And Jesus also told the disciples that if you don't understand the parable of the sower, you will not understand any other parable. Amen. Amen. That means that all the interpretations of the other parable is impregnated. In your understanding of the parable of the sower. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you getting alive? Amen. Also, I see you. Oh, please. Come and, come and sit by. Amen. Amen. Give him a clap of it. Come and sit by. Also, <laughs> hallelujah. Um, come, on, come and sit by. Also, here. Are you alive? <laughs> Tell your neighbor, stop the gossiping. It's dangerous. Gossip can increase a case. <laughs> eh, you don't believe that one. Because you are a gossiper, you want to cancel that one. Go and read the Bible very well and see it. Hallelujah. Amen. It's one of the things that God hates. is gossip. Amen. Amen. Gossip is talking about somebody who is not there to defend themselves. And you might misinterpret what you say. But since you have accepted gossip as part of your life, let me leave it there and let me continue what I'm saying. Hallelujah. Uh, tell your neighbor congratulations. Keep gossiping. Tell them. <laughs> Don't be afraid. Uh, interactive teaching. Hallelujah. Amen. Now tomorrow, uh, I want to minister to you in a very special way. Amen. Depends on how the Holy Ghost will move this night on what I'm going to teach. Amen. Amen. I am one not to take for granted at all by God. Whoever comes to protest. It means that if I come here, two people, I must preach like I'm preaching at Jubilee Tabernacle. Amen. You know, Friday, I don't know how many people are laying hands on. Everybody was feeling for me. The South African woman said, hey, I've never seen anything like this in all my life. I think I was laying hands and ghosts and angels were joining the queue. Amen. Hey! <laughs> I turned and I saw the queue. I almost got this kind of say, Lord, can I stop here? The Lord said, no, continue. Hallelujah. Amen. But bless God, we are dealing with them. Now, listen. Anyway. Um, 
One man of God told me, he said that you can go to the gym for the first time and lift mental peace. When you wake up, you can't lift your hand. So he asked me, he said, were you able to lift your hand? <laughs> the next day, I said, I'm lifting it. Can't you see I'm preaching? Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Uh, that is what the grace of God can do. Amen. And when God calls you, he equips you for the calling. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Every curse on your life is broken by the power Amen. of God. Amen. 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 It is not enough to go to war and start shooting missiles. You must have in mind with the determination to win the war. Amen. You can shoot missiles and not win. Or without the heart of winning the battle. Amen. 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 So the strategy is not just you have a missile and you are shooting it. At the end of the day, you must win. Amen. Hmm? Are you alive? Hallelujah. Tell, you, tell your neighbor you must win the battle. The second point I want to make here is that you cannot understand the blessing without understanding the curse. Are you getting it? Because if the curse is not there, then when the blessing comes, you will acknowledge it. The reason we cry, we celebrate Jesus in the worship, and sometimes you weep it because you know where you used to be. And what salvation has done for you. Are you getting what I'm talking about? So, number two, if you get to the place of understanding how curses operate, then when God blesses you, you stay in the blessing. Because you can be in the blessing and slip into the curse. That is the point. Today, a lady sent me a very interesting email. He said that he goes to a church somewhere and the pastor has slept with 12 girls in a church. Wow! Jesus chose 12 disciples. This pastor has chosen 12 girls. And I'm sure they are all choristers. I was shocked. I'm telling you the truth. I can give you the email to revise. It's too sensitive. Hallelujah. That's what it is. Amen. And you know, when I, was, when I was reading the email, God told me something. He said, these are the pastors that hate pastors who, do, who preach righteousness. You see, there's something about the kingdom. Eh? If you don't do what is right, huh? Everything evil hate everything righteous. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's very simple. If you don't take care, you become antagonistic and cantankerous, and you begin to hate people who are living right. Yes. Because the Pharisees were hypocrites, they hated Jesus' righteousness. Ah. It's very simple. And they end up bringing all kinds of things upon themselves because you can do nothing against the truth but for the truth. And the Bible says, buy the truth and sell it or not. Let me tell this generation, we are not serving God in our terms. You don't come to Christ and do whatever you like. There are terms of the kingdom. There are rules of engagement. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Let me open up and tell you, amen. And that's why we are preaching what we are preaching. You have to know the other side. You must understand the other side. The moment Adam slipped out of obedience, he stepped into the curse. Straightforward. Straightforward. Amen. The moment he did that, in the day you eat of this food, you will surely die. But God didn't give the detail. You see, when you disobey, more things go in the disobedience. He didn't even tell him that when you eat it, I will curse you. But the curse is, package, is part of the package of the disobedience. But he didn't tell him. No. No. He told Samson that don't shave your hair. Now, do you know something? Let me tell you something about Samson. Samson was the sixth judge of Israel. He's the only judge who didn't need military. He alone was a military. That's how anointed Samson is. He didn't need a military. But let me tell you also the weakness of that. It means that Samson, oh, I don't know why I'm going to this way. I don't know why the Holy Ghost is taking me this way. Samson was a one man soldier. It means that what thousand soldiers can do, Samson could do that alone. The weakness is that he didn't have a mentor. Nobody advises him. He doesn't take counsel from anybody. He was one man of his own. He did, he, oh, Jesus, I wish I can preach this one. And he sank deep into it. <laughs> I 
Why do you go and choose a girl from the people God said destroy? <laughs> Today when I was studying about generational blessing, God took me to a dimension that I've never studied, but when the time comes, I'll tell you. Amen. Amen. Now, so once a curse and the blessing must take over. Because the simple definition of a curse is that it's the opposite of a blessing. So, you don't need anybody to prophesy to you. When you see some symptoms, now, once you wake up and you are shivering and your body is hot, you can easily tell you have a fever or malaria. It's just the symptoms of malaria. Are you getting what I'm talking about? So, there are symptoms of a curse. But nobody will try to just ignore that one. And, and, and the thing is that, let me tell you something. <laughs> In the spirit realm, when you leave darkness, you go to light. When you leave light, you come to darkness. There's no neutral light. That is why I keep telling you, when you mix hair, you can't mix hair. Do you want to mix hair? Do you want to mix uh, hair? Huh? <laughs> because once you mix hair, you can't mix heaven. <clears throat> there is no neutral place for God to take you. When you mix heaven too, it's not possible. There is no neutral ground. Once you leave here, you are there. Once you step out of the platform of faith, you are in doubt. So there is no neutral place in the realms of the spirit. You are either blessed or cursed. And the moment the curse is broken, it must be replaced by a blessing. So I will show you a little thing. Now watch this. When you go to the New Living Translation from Genesis chapter 11, after the flood, from verse number 10, you will notice that Noah has three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now, God began to trap the Jewish line from Abraham. So this whole Jewish line, Abraham was from Mesopotamia. I don't want to go there in a second. The heir of Chaldees. He came from the descendants and this is the account. I'm going to show you as I'm talking about generational blessing that there are words you cannot ignore when you talk about generational blessing. It has to do with genealogy. It has to do. So when you see the Bible talk about genealogy, it is showing you and tracing a background. So the bigger, 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 you don't want to read, there is a reason God put it there. That means that God does not ignore where you are coming from. Because you can be the product of your ancestors. Are you alive? Watch this. Huh? This is the account of Shem's family. Two years after the great flood. So two years after the great flood, then something happened, they started scattering. Shem, somewhere started raising a family. When Shem was 100, but don't forget, there were eight people in the ark, and all the eight people were Noah, his wife, and his son, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and their wife. So every time God, the ark was a very interesting place. If, if you are not two, you are not qualified. Oh. So listen. All the guys who are not married. As the guy, you married. If he said, no, tell you, you are not in the ark and you cannot be in the ark. Because the qualification is that everything to do must enter the ark. Because to stay there, I'm telling you. And the reason, oh, can I say it? And there was two, two, so there was no fornication. Ah, there was no adultery. Those who are standing quiet, they are all suspects. Everything was two. Now there was no fornication. The doves were two. Though nobody was crossing another dove. The hippopotamus was two. Uh, the elephants were two. Kwame was two. Gideon two. Everything was two. Number two, there was no Gideon and Kwame. Huh? There was no Patricia and every. It was a positive and a negative to generate power. Two positive don't give power. Two negative don't give power. Uh, 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 I'm preaching. Oh, uh, these people are not sure they are ready for me yet. I say two positive don't release power. Two negative don't release power. That is why you don't have to marry somebody that look like you. If you are quiet, marry a talkative. And if you are talkative, but you are the only one who are choosing a talkative like you. That is why you are always angry. I'm preaching. Hallelujah. So that's what was happening there. The ark was a very interesting place, Shem. And the Bible said when they came back two years after the great flood, when Shem was 100 years old, he became the father of Al-Fazad. 
God is tracing fatherhood, fatherhood. After that, after the birth of Absalom, that Shem lived 500 years. Wow, can you imagine you marry for 500 years? Hey, Jesus Christ. Wow. Livy with Levi Ivy for 500 years. And you are not expected to fornicate. Hey. Or to commit adultery. Thank God for reducing the age. Some people are married for 10 years and they can't handle one woman for 10 years. 10 years is too much, eh? Some people, three months. In fact, now they say day one. They say first day, they fire on the maid of honor. How will you handle 500 years? Hey! One woman, 500 years every day. Every day, 500. Year one, year two, year three, year four, year five. Hey! You pass here, the kitchen is there. You go to the bathroom, is there. You are traveling, is there. 500 years. Me yes. <laughs> I know, see. Ah, these guys have a lot of grace, oh. Huh? After the birth of Alphaza, Shem lived another 500 years. That's a 600. And had other sons and daughters. We don't know the number. We don't know the number. Because 500 years, and my many way God couldn't count them, so we left it there. 500 years, say sons and daughters. We there was no account that you marry another woman. 500 years, one woman, sons and daughters. Let's say, everybody, I call you 500 years. Give the Lord a clap of when I'm preaching. Hey. After the birth of Alpha, that's 7,500 years and had sons and daughters. Let's keep going. Let me show you something. When Alpha was 35 years old, he became, you, your father, 500, you, 35. He became the father of Shelah. Watch this. And after the birth of Shelah, after he see 403 years and becomes, you see, God is reducing the age because there was too much complications that goes with it. 500, now 403. Let's keep going. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to skip the scripture. So, I'm reading verse 4. Instead of 15, give me instead of 50, give me 16. I want to show you something. And Selah was 30 years old and became the father of Eber. This guy's father was 35, he was 34. Eber was 34 years old and became the father of what? Perek. Huh? Perek was 30 years old and became the father of what? Riu. Riu was 32 years old and became the father of what? Seruk. Seruk was 30 years old and became the father of what? Naho. Naho was 29 years old and became the father of what? Terra. 35, 34, 30. Then 29. There was a 32, there was a 29. Now let's see what happened to Terra. Terra was 70 years old and he became the father of Abraham. This is what we are tracing a case. This is what we are tracing when something has gone wrong. If you notice from Shem, all the children, only firstborns are mentioned. The rest of the children are not mentioned. All the Bible says the sons and daughters. It is all there. Let's go back to verse number 11. And then let me show you a little bit of it. After the birth of Al-Fazad, Shem lived 500 years and become sons and daughters. Have you noticed this? Now don't skip. Just keep going. Don't skip. Don't skip. Al-Fazad was 35 years and became the father of Asherah. You notice that. And the birth of uh, Shela was... After the birth of Shela, Al-Fazad lived 400 and... Three years and become what? Sons and daughters. Have you noticed it? Then Sarah also was 30 years old so and became the father of Eba. It looks like a Nigerian food. And after the birth of Eba, Sarah lived another 400 years and so become as. So sons and daughters, sons and daughters, sons and daughters. All the rest were not mentioned until we get to Terra. Until we get to where? Watch this. Can you move me to Terra? Can you move me to Terra? It's going to struggle. I think it's verse 26. 26 there about. If you don't mind. Uh -huh. Okay, come to 25 and let me see something. So the Bible said, after the birth of Terah, now he live another what? 119 years. God has reduced the years now and had other sons and daughters. But then when he came to Terah, he was 70 years old. Now, I have preached this thing in the message I call patterns in the bloodline. So if you go to the message we call patterns in the bloodline, you can easily find out the meaning of what I'm talking about. 
Are you listening to what I'm saying? Now, so, the Bible is saying here that um, Alphazad, leave. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm looking for a scripture for you. Um, when Tedra was 70 years old, he became the father of what? And who? And who? This is what it calls for. Hemiletics. It's a scientific interpretation of scripture. Just not taking it spiritually. For instance, one of the scientific scripture in the New Testament is that Jesus Christ went to fast for 40 days and 40 nights. And the Bible says he was hungry. That word is totally scientific. There's nothing spiritual about it. If Jesus was hungry, then he didn't fast as a God. You didn't get it. Let me go down. Now, when Jesus was walking on earth, he was 100% man and 100% God. Now, a lot of theologians and a lot of pastors have preached that Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights because he was God. But the moment they put that scientific word, he was hungry. That means he didn't fast as a God because God never gets hungry. So it's completely scientific. It has nothing. That means that it's totally natural and spiritual. Amen. I don't want to get you confused. Hallelujah. If I'm preaching to pastors, I can confuse them a little bit. But you, you are already confused. Amen. So tell your neighbor, I don't want daddy to confuse me. Okay. Now, so, so, after, 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 which one is which? Wow. So there are two kinds of New Living Translations I'm reading here. Have you noticed this one? It says, when, when, when Terra was 70 years old. That is why I'm getting, that's why I was trying to check. You know, say, after, Pazabet, Pazab, where is the problem coming from? One is not updated or what? Which one? You sure it's this one? Because sometimes, they, they, all of them are saying uh, NLT. But this one, let me check whether my own say, okay, I'll use my own to validate. Let me not go into it. Let me not go into it. Okay. When Terah was 70 years old, he became the father of what? Abraham. Nahor and Haran is there. Because all of us are looking here, let me look at this. After Terah was 70 years old, when after when after hmm. he became the father of abraham Naho and haran now watch this so now the eight bracket for marriage was between 30 29 to about 35 but one person has waited for 70 before he married that is where spiritual investigation must start so when you see the scripture and you start reading and you see that something has changed and the gap has become full because now it has almost doubled up 35 plus 35 should give you what 70 and at the time Al Alphazad married, he was 35 years. From Alphazad, the next one was around 33, and then 34, 32. We even come to this one's father Naho was 29 years. But this guy waited for 70 years before he had a child. Hallelujah. Now, because he had a child at the age of 70, number two, the second point we must learn here is that why is it that this one, all the rest of the children are mentioned? Because from the from 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 Shem. All the way down to Nahor, only the firstborns are mentioned. The rest are sons and daughters. Here, there is no daughter mentioned. It's only three men that are mentioned here. So the Bible never mentioned all the children. He just said the firstborn is blessed and the rest are blessed. So he said you have sons and daughters. That is what it is. Sit down, sit down. Hallelujah. You have sons and daughters. That is what I never told you to stand up, actually. I, I don't think I said that. I have, you can go and play the table. I never say stand up. Never, hallelujah. And if you stood out, if you sat down, I could have dealt with you too. Oh, yes, yes, because that one too. Uh, it's not really a curse, but it's cruising into it. Now, after Tedra was 70 years old, he became the father of Abraham. Everyone say Abraham and Nahor and Haram. It looks like he named Nahor after his father because his father was called Nahor. And the Bible also was saying that three children have been mentioned here. Number one, don't forget the fact that he gave birth at 70. Number two, all the three are mentioned. Number three, you realize that when we also read, you will notice that all the children buried their father. Let's see the next one. 
Let's see the next verse here. This is the account of Terah's family. Terah was the father of Abraham, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran was the father of what? Lot. Everybody say, Haran was the father of Lot. Everybody say, Haran was the father of Lot. Say that again. Say it very loud. Say, Haran was the father of Lot. Do you remember Lot? If Haran was the father of Lot, now, some of the infantry will say he's Abraham's nephew. But Ashanti will say he's his senior father. Oh, you don't understand? This is my brother. Hmm? I'm the first one, he's the second boy. This is my brother's son. Huh? The infantry will say I'm his uncle. But the account people will say that, ni papa penny. Are you getting it? But choose where you are from. And then let's continue on the subject. So, actually, some people interpret the father a lot also because Abraham was the firstborn. Do you know Abraham, Nahor, and Haran? And Haran was the father of Lot. Let's see what happened. Let's see what God said in the next one. Haran died in the air of Chadis. It means that this is the first time a father is burying the son. From the descendants of Shem, nobody has ever buried a son. This is the first time a son is buried. All the time, the sons buried their father. Are you, are you, are, have you gone home or you are here? I want to show you in the Bible that the things you preach, if you, if you study this one, eh, that is why yesterday I was talking to you about the allegorical statements that Paul made, that you need a revelation to understand it, but the Bible not necessarily mentioned. For instance, there's something they call prodigal son. It's not in the Bible. The Bible never mentioned the name prodigal, but we just give that title because the guy left and he came. So based on the picture of what you are saying, we can say that by the trade, something has gone wrong. And you can give it an interpretation. The theological term is that I don't want to be quick to give it a name now, but I want to show you. But Haran died in the hour of Chinese in the land of his, of his bed. Why his father, Terah, was still alive. So you see, the Bible specifically is trying to explain something here. His father was still alive because it's the first time that a father is burying the son. Hey! Now, when you trace great, 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 great grandfather, you land on Noah. He was exempted from judgment because the Bible claimed he was a righteous preacher. So the whole world was wicked, the wickedness. Of, the, 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 the Bible said, God said, it repented me that I've made man. I would destroy man from the face of them, but Noah found favor with God. And then out of Noah, he came there, he entered the ark with his three sons. When they came back, Shem started producing a family. Him, we, we, we don't have time to talk about Shem, Ham's family and then uh, Shem, Ham, and then which one? What was the other one? Huh? And Japheth. Now, I don't want to go there because there's another thing we have to learn from that. Remember Noah cursed one of his grandchildren. He didn't curse his son, but he cursed the, the children of the one that went to see his nakedness. Don't let us go there. So here, but Haran died in the air of Chadis, the land of his birth, while his father Terah was still living. Mm. Now let's see the next thing that happened here. Meanwhile, Abraham, Nahor, Abraham, meanwhile, Abraham and Nahor both married. The name of Abraham's wife was Sarah. And the name of Nahor's wife was Milka. Milka and her sister Iska were daughters of Nahor's brother Haran. Wait, let's break it down. Let's break it down. And find me somewhere in Genesis chapter 13. When Abraham said, my wife is my sister. I think 26, 12, 13 or 2012. Okay, we'll come to that. Now, let's take our time and build this one. Meanwhile, Abraham and, no, I'm, I'm pronouncing, Abraham and Nahor both married. Let's see the people they marry. The name of Abraham's wife is what? Now, wait, do you remember that I told you that? From Shem, we all, we all, all we know is they have sons and daughters. The rest of the children's name were not mentioned. It's only the firstborn that were mentioned. Here, Abraham's father Terra, who happened to have a child when he was 70 years. Don't forget, Abraham's father has a child when he was 70. Abraham has a child when he was 100. We are coming to that in a second. Mm? If the thing is, doesn't get broken, then it gets desperate while the age goes by. Watch this. Meanwhile, Abraham and Nahor both married. The name of Abraham's wife is what? Sarah. 
That is, so who is this Sarah? Genesis chapter 20, 2, 20, Genesis chapter 20, verse 12. When he was lying, now watch this. This is what he says. She, she, and she really is my sister. This is Abraham talking about Sarah. So the reason why God didn't punish Abraham is that what he said, my wife is my sister, is not a lie. She really is my sister, for we both have the same father, but different mothers. We are going to come back. So Abraham actually married his half-sister. So Sarah and Abraham are all fathers of terror. Oh, you have to use scripture to interpret scripture. I'm showing you something. Abraham, now let's see. So there was insects there. There was intermarriages there. It can only happen in a home where there is no God. Now, let's come back to where I left off. Uh -huh. Meanwhile, so now we know that Abraham has married his half sister. Let's check the rest of the brothers. Watch this. The name of Abraham's wife was what? Sarah. Who come from the same father with Abraham. So who is Sarah's father? Oh, good guys. I hear somebody say, uh, oh, you know, you say uh, Papa Mponsa or something. I hear some name be here. Papa Mponsa. Please. Who is Abraham's father? Who is Sarah's father? Let's continue. The name of Abraham's wife was Sarah. Sarah. And the name of Nahor's wife was what? Milka. And her sister Iska were the daughters of one. Nahor's brother Haran. You are not getting it. Let's go back to verse number 27. Hmm. This is account of Terah's family. Terah was the father of what? Abraham and what? And what? So the first born is what? The second born is what? The third born is what? Haran was the father of who? So Miska and Iska were the sisters of Lot. Tell the guy not to sleep. Sleeping at this message. Wow. This is exciting. Hi. Yeah. And Haran was the father of Lot. Go to verse 28. Watch this. But Haran died in the air of Chadis and the land of his birth while his father Terah was still living. Now let's go to the, the main day. The name of Abraham's wife was Sarah and the name of Nahor's wife is what? Milka. So who is Milka's father? Haran. So, <laughs> come, come, let's do something here. Abraham. Nahor. Give me another man. Haran. Huh? Hey, good him come. This one is what? Sarah. No, come. Um, uh, no. Terra. This is their father. This is their father. Eh? We don't know. This girl, Sarah. His mother is silent. We don't know. But this one, eh, his mother, eh, is part of the wife of this one. We don't also know this one. It's possible this and this and this might come from the same father, mother. It's possible. Then along the way, he gets pregnant somewhere. And then, eh, so let's say this one, this is his mother. Mm -hmm. Are you getting it? And then these three guys, so this is their mother. Are you getting the picture? Abraham, Naho, and Haran, mother. Eh? Sarah, mother. Pekinaburu, this one. <laughs> this guy here, Sarah, married his half brother, Abraham. This guy, who is called what? Haran, or Naho. Huh? Let's go back to verse number 27. And let me see something. Verse 27. The family, Terah was the father of Abraham, Nahor, and Haran. Abraham, Nahor, and Haran. Okay. Haran was the father of what? Lot. Let's come back. Come back to verse 28. Haran died before the heir of Chadis. Okay. Go to the next verse. Watch this. Mm -mm 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 -mm. 
The name of Abraham's wife was Sarah, and the name of Nahor's wife was what? Milka and her sister Iska were the daughters of what? No. No, the daughters of what? Nahor's brother what? Oh, this one. So this one, there were two daughters here. Lot and two daughters. Two daughters, come. Two of you, come. First to come. Uh huh. So, I want to show you something. You get understanding. So, this is this guy's daughters. And this girl here is called what? Milka. He married who? Who is Naho? So, you see, this guy married his junior brother's daughter. You have the pictures now. Give the Lord a clap of it. What is the foundation of all this trouble? All of hey, Abraham, Naho, Harad, everybody, you are all blessed. Sit down. Mm -hmm. Now, now I like the way you say, Do you know where you are coming from? Let me show you. Do you know the foundation of all this? Why did Tara wait for 70 years before he had children? And why did all this incest spirit came in. Now, Moses couldn't write about it. We didn't know the thing. We, I, 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 I was trying to trace it. I realized that God didn't give the revelation to Moses. He gave it to Joshua. Joshua 24 verse 2. Watch this. <laughs> ah, Joshua 24 verse 2. Joshua said to the people, now he has become a prophet. This is what the Lord said. I like the way the King James put it. The King James said, now King James like, that say yes the Lord. So this one, I'm not concocting it. I heard it from God directly and I'm telling you. Because when it happened, I, Joshua, was not there. So for instance, if you read the book of Genesis chapter 1, when God was creating the word, Moses was not there. So what Moses writes was a dictation. God told him something that happened that was not there. So here, God is telling Joshua something that happened. He didn't tell Moses, but he told Joshua. He said, that says yes, the Lord God of Israel, your fathers dwell in the other side of the flood of the old time. Even Terah, he's the only one that was mentioned. Terah, the father of Abraham, the father of Nahor, and they serve other gods. The reason Haram was not mentioned at that time, he has died. And they serve what? Small G-O-S. So between Nahor coming to Terah, Terah deviated from the God of Noah and find a shrine. Wow. And the shrine introduced the insects. So when God get ready to break the curse, Genesis chapter 12, we are talking about it. When we go back, everything we're talking there. So Genesis chapter 12, God, chapter 11, was when all these incest happened. Chapter 12, God walked to them and said, let me save the firstborn. Because right from your generation, all the firstborn were saved by you. Listen, now the Lord has said to Abraham, the Lord has said to Abraham, give me the New Living Translation. The Lord has said to Abraham, the Lord has said to Abraham, leave. Leave your native country. Something is wrong there. Your relatives your father's family mother was not mentioned father's family and go to the land that i will show you that means that i cannot bless you in the center of this case this environment is not conducive for so god said leave now watch this the bible the hebrew writer said he loved he didn't know where he was going because if i show you you'll come back even here, there was still disobedient here. There was major disobedience. Listen to the thing. The Lord said to Abraham, leave your native country, number one. Get out of this country. Something is wrong here. Then your relatives, it means that no relatives must go with you. You cannot break your family curse when you will not break your curse. You can't even start breaking your brother's curse. When it comes to this, it is like salvation. In fact, Case of somebody who doesn't believe even have a case. So one day it's possible that you will become a millionaire and the family doesn't understand. It's because you have encountered something they have not encountered. Watch this. Leave your native country. 
your relatives and your father's family and go to a land that I will show you. Let's keep reading and let's see something. And when you do that, once you do that, there's something about God. He will always add a promise to obedience. He will add a benefit to obedience. If you do that, then I will make of you a great nation. I'm not going to make you a family. I will move you to the realms of a nation. I will bless you and make you famous and you will become a blessing to others. Watch this. This is it. Now, watch it. Once the curse is broken, it must be replaced by a blessing. God is extracting the guy from his family and he's already talking about blessing. So if there's a curse broken on your life, then the blessing must begin from today. And receive that blessing in the name of Jesus Christ. Ooh, I'm going to show you something in the book of Genesis that when it comes to curses and blessings, don't take words for granted. Don't take words for granted. Hallelujah. And when you meet any anointed man of God, be sensitive to the words that come out of his mouth. It can change your destiny. The whole word I saw yesterday came by words. So if words produce, if, if curses come as a result of words, then blessing must come as a result of words. Now, what is really a blessing? I'm going to show you something. It means that to bless somebody means to empower the person to make it. No, you are not getting what I'm saying. Everybody say empowerment. So I'm going to take you to the book of Genesis 26. I'm going to show you that. When Isaac blessed Jacob, he empowered Jacob to become great. And even when Esau was begging for the blessing, he said, I have made your brother lord over you. It means I have empowered him to rule you. And it has nothing to do with writing a word. It was by words. Follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me. Give the Lord a wave. Follow me. Are you getting it? So, if I bless you, I have empowered you to prosper. I have empowered you to become great. I have empowered you to rise above the status quo. I have empowered you to be different from anybody amongst your family. And the blessing can make people that are supposed to be in the same place with you start serving you. The word blessing in the Hebrew is the word barak. And the word barak means to kneel down and receive. Let me not go there for now. Hallelujah. So that is the word. Now watch this. I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you. I will bless you. I will bless you. I, will, I have not started blessing you yet, but if you obey, I will bless you. And once I start blessing you, the curse is cancelled. Now watch this. When the empowering words start being pronounced over your life, don't begin to figure out the method God will use. So Abraham never started a business. He even lied. And the lie brought him a lot of money. He lied. My wife is yesterday. We read it. And the man gave him cattle and men servant and men servant and gold and silver. Why did Pharaoh give him things? Even after he came to know that the guy is his sister, he couldn't take the things back because he's empowered. When you are empowered there, your favor cannot slip. If somebody, those who shouted, you are getting a small, small. Once you are empowered, your favor cannot slip. A lot of people will not understand. A lot of people will not understand. Anybody that is empowered to be blessed, it's difficult to define the person. You want to trace because you will judge the person by your natural mind. What work is he doing? What is he doing? If you come to Portis and you try to find out how we make our money, you are already in a loss. You will start fighting God directly. So never fought people God is blessing. It can cost you your life. Whether you are in government or whatever, God can kill. I'm telling you, never attack people God is blessing. That is what Hamas has done. It's an empowerment for blessing. No. Are you not afraid? That this small country, all these people surrounded, but nobody can touch them. It's an empowerment. Naturally, it doesn't make sense. Egypt, Syria, Lebanon, Gaza, Palestine, Jordan, and these people are in the center. The reason you can't touch them is that they are empowered. So when you get empowered, your enemies are not standing. Oh my, I'm talking to somebody that don't understand. It's empowerment, it's empowerment, it's empowerment. May the Lord empower you to be blessed. So I will bless you. I will bless. A lot of people don't understand this principle. A lot of people. Unfortunately, we live in a generation that motivational speaking is trying to kill faith. 
and it's making you feel like you must work hard. It's part of the equation, but hard working don't produce blessing. Oh, come on here. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. It's just motivational speaking. Let me tell you something. Number two, this one will shock you. Hard working does not transfer inheritance. It cannot, it cannot, it cannot, it cannot. Because inheritance has nothing to do with the will. When you are empowered to be blessed, what your father has is nothing. Isaac was an individual. His next generation. Now, number two, if you don't understand generational blessing, then you only know the God of Abraham. It's generational blessing that causes you to know the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob and the God of Joseph, and you keep running. That means that as you are sitting here, if at the time you are dying at the age of 100, your children are begging that you were not blessed. Number two, let me make another point. If your children go through what you have been through, then you have never been empowered to be blessed. That means that if you never go to university, your children must go to Oxford. I'm already preaching. Empowerment. I'm talking about empowerment. So it's not a slogan. It's a spiritual empowerment. And I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. Look at what the Bible put it. will come there. The blessings of the Lord make it rich. So the blessing is not money. The blessings of the Lord make it rich. So the word pronounced will empower to produce the money. The blessings of the Lord make it. The blessings of the Lord make it. The blessings of the Lord make it. So the words will release it empower you to produce the results. I'm preaching. The blessings of the Lord make it. If you are not blessed, don't try to travel out. Break a case before you go for visa. You will get to an environment that it will be easy for them to deal with you. Some environment are conducive for a case to continue because nothing is resisting them. I will bless you and make you famous and you will be a blessing to others. Let's keep going. Watch this. Don't forget, get thee out of your country from your relatives so there must be no disobedience. I will bless those who bless you. This is what is called the security around the blessing. Now, you see, God is so sharp. This God, eh, he knows that when the blessing comes, it will attract enviness and jealousy. So he puts security around it. This is the security around the Abrahamic blessing. God said, I naturally don't want to curse. I naturally don't want to do evil because there must be a cause for a curse. But if anybody curse, you come under my curse. So he put a security on the Abrahamic blessing. And the security is that don't get to curse Abraham. You not knowing is not an excuse. But this man, I will bless those who bless you. So if you want to be blessed, bless Abraham. Oh, man. If you want to walk in a blessing, bless Abraham. But I will curse those who, I will curse those who treat you with contempt. Anybody that hates you, anybody that mischief, that is why God doesn't allow us to live in enviness. There are people that you cannot explain their blessing. You don't have to mark them that what work do they do. They don't need to do any work. Because they are empowered. empowered. They are empowered. And let him tell you something. Even if you work somewhere, somebody must pay you. Yes, sir. Everywhere you work, you work in another government or something, they must pay you. So some people, like, they get their pay from heaven. Yes, sir. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. You don't know. Let me tell you something. All the money in the Central Bank of America is for God. All the money in the Central Bank of Britain is for God. All the money in the Central Bank of Ghana is for God. How do I know that the silver and the gold are mine? No president can claim the wealth of Ghana as his property. You come to power, the one you can get, you get, when your time finishes, you step out. And the money will still be there. Because God said the money is smart. Do you know why all the money in the world becomes God's property? Because he owns your breath. So listen, if you claim the money is yours, he can pull the breath. He has to give you life to enjoy the blessing. So when God draws the oxygen, you are dead. And when you are dead, who owns your money? Anybody that trying to hurt you to God can kill him. I want to make a point for you to understand. Very strong. Amen. So watch this. If you understand that principle, then when God is paying, you know who to touch. That means also for you has ten billion dollars. He is only a possessor of the money, but steward of nothing. 
So every money we all have, we are possessors of everything, but still of nothing. God keep it in your side until he needs it. Yes, hmm? Do you understand? That is how sometimes you give me envelope. Do you know why he gave me the envelope? God knows I need money. And because he pays me, he must, the money he gave you, my portion was inside. You, you don't like it. You might not be happy with it, but that is the way it went. All oh, the wealth of Pharaoh, Abraham's portion was inside. He just have to lie and get a chunk of it. Even the lie brought heavy duty blessings. Oh, you are not catching what I'm saying. That's what it is. So everything you are looking for, God has kept it in somebody's house. That is why he can make you a millionaire tomorrow by this time because if he decides to do it. Yeah. For instance, he was getting ready to bless a guy. He was an ex-convict in a prison. He picked him from the prison and sent him to the palace in 24 hours. Now, somebody who was an ex-convict 24 hours, he was in control of the country. Only God can do that. Can you imagine God pick somebody from his own prison? And we announced that he's the prime minister of Ghana. No constitutional connection. No, oh, you are not listening to what I'm talking about. That is the way it works. So once you are, em- oh, I want to say something here. Once you are empowered, pro- protocols are not observed. Oh, God will bypass all the protocol systems. Constitution notwithstanding. Who wrote the constitution to challenge God? There was constitution. Do you know something? Let me tell you a mystery. Let me tell you a mystery. There was no record that Egypt has ever had a prime minister. No record. So Joseph was the first and the last prime minister. Because after Joseph, we never heard that there was another prime minister. So when there was no position, God created one. Oh man, I'm preaching. Are you getting it? So when the blessing started, God is going to create all kinds of positions and avenues for you. You marry the right man. You travel to the right place. Suddenly, you that is struggling, things are changing. That is what I said tomorrow. I want to minister to you in a very special way. I am preaching because I am empowered to preach it. And tomorrow, I want to lay hands and release a blessing. You see, the dimension of the curses I have not preached, even womb, it can be cursed or blessed. Some wombs has produced some robbers. And some wombs has produced presidents. Mm, mm, mm. So what kind of children are in your womb? What has your generations done that we need to break something so that your womb will not produce something you will regret? Adolf Hitler, mother never thought this is the guy I'm carrying. This is what he's going to do. So the things we are talking about here, eh, it's not a joking matter. We are dealing with curses and blessing. It has to do with different things. You have to understand that. The blessing is empowerment. It's an empowerment. I will bless you. I will bless them that bless you. I will curse them that curse you. So never meet Abraham and curse him. Because when you curse Abraham, you don't come under a, a curse of a prophet. You come under the curse of God direct. And God determined the chunk of your curse. It will be heavy. Too much. He said, I myself. That is why I was talking about hidden care. There are some people you hate them. You have attracted the case. Mm. You don't like them. You are, you are digging your grief. Mm. Africans love that thing. Some people just hate people without a cause. That is why God puts a security on the blessing. Some people, you see, some people are in some place and suddenly somebody appears and the person is ascending. Don't think because promotion coming from above. So when you see people getting favor from kings and from people, it's not them. It's a force behind them. It's a spirit. Oh, Jesus. There is something behind the scene. Unseen forces that are manipulating the system. (laughs) Am I talking to somebody here today? I see blessing coming upon your life. Listen, permit me to preach this thing this week and next week. That is what today God instructed me. At the end of the fasting, share a t-shirt of generational blessing. Yeah. And so it will get to your house and Jesus Christ. I can't wait for tomorrow to show you that by the message I'm preaching, your born and unborn children are secured in the future. 
they are so secure. The only thing that, listen, when you are under a curse, it's not even worth having children. I will show it to you in the Bible. I will prove to you in the Bible until the curse is broken. You have to have the picture to break it or something. Because God always has the generations in mind. If you notice this generation and some of the children, he named them before they were born. I'm telling you, some, they received their name. When generational blessings started, even your children are named from heaven. In a time of season, by this time I shall return. Your wife Isaac shall conceive. He shall have a son. He shall call his name Isaac. What is the meaning of Isaac? I'll tell you. Now, if the blessing is there and you mistakenly name the person, God will change it. They mistakenly name him Jacob. God said, no, you are called Israel. Because you see, there is something from your background that will always want to come and interfere with your destiny. If you are not strong in the things of God, that struggle spirit, that, that, that wahala spirit, it descended on Jacob. Even though he took the blessing, he was fighting battles. And the name Jacob has a death sentence on it. You didn't hear what I said. Who Esau wanted to kill was Jacob. But Esau met Israel. So he couldn't kill him. The only reason why somebody said your brother has come here, you took 400 troops to go and meet him. Yeah? When Jacob he was so frightened that he divided his family to teach, when they kill one, some will leave. Because he knew that the determination was there. He vowed that any time I meet my brother, I'll kill him. So when he met God, God said, What is your name? He said, My name is called Jacob. He said, That is a name with a death sentence. If you meet Esau with this name, you are a dead man. And I've not finished you. From today, all heavens and titties and the court of heaven swear affidavit and change his name. And his names are no more be called Jacob, but Israel. And so, the moment Esau met him, he didn't meet Jacob. That's right. He met, he him, met right. him. So, when he met Israel, he started kissing him. Right. He started hugging him. Right. They were crying. If he met Jacob, he could have killed him. Wow. So, by a generational blessing, eh, they will not meet the person they thought they are meeting to destroy his children. Something was shift in the realms of the spirit. And you cannot be located by witchcraft. Their coffins cannot locate you. They are red because your name is shifted in the realms of this. That is why, by generational blessing, I don't care what I delay in your life. Even as children, I know you can have children. Because listen, all God has to do is to pronounce you blessed. It's just a matter of time. Whether you get it early age or old age, it will happen. You just have to get a blessing. You just have to get a blessing. Once the blessing comes, it will replace the curse and has power to push the curse away completely. Oh Lord, I'm preaching something here today. Are you getting what I'm talking about? The blessing. Somebody say the blessing. Empower to become. Empower to become. So when the blessing comes, you don't know what you are doing. Never attack anybody that is blessed. You will curse your generations. I'm telling you, that's why some people, they die rough, rough. Their children become wayward. It's possible they have attacked somebody they shouldn't attack. They hate somebody they shouldn't hate. They've taken somebody's name to juju who God has blessed. Even Balaam told Balaam, how can I curse somebody God has blessed? It means that the blessing is stronger than the curse. How can I do that? He said, I can't. He said, I desire to curse. You raise me seven altars, but I can't because you cannot curse anybody that is blessed. Because the opposite of a blessing is a curse. And the definition of a curse is the absence of a blessing. So the presence of the blessing naturally cancels a curse. Naturally. You just have to get blessed. That's all. And it come by where the blessings of the Lord make it, 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 the blessings of the Lord empower to become. So once the blessings come, hey, that is why. Watch this. Those guys understand the system such a way that all the wealth and the Bible. This is the description of this is the description of Isaac. The man was strong and went forward. And was great until he became great. Is it Genesis chapter 26? Along the line, if you read some verse, uh, verse what? 12 that way. Hmm? 
12, 13, Genesis chapter 26, verse number 12 and 13. Get it for me. He became very rich man and his word continued to grow. This is Isaac. Watch this. I want to show you something. He acquired so many flocks of sheep and goat, herds and cattle and servants that the Philistines became jealous of him. So a nation jealous a man. No. Do you know the empowerment of a blessing? A whole nation was envious of one man from the president to the gong gong beater. Everybody was like, hey, what kind of thing is that? No, some a individual can be envious of individual, but the whole nation. Can you imagine Ghana envies one man? That is the equivalent of the man's wealth. It's more than Ghana. The Bible says, and the Philistines, and the Philistines became jealous of him. Look at what the Philistines says. Look at what they said. Huh? So the Philistines fill up all, all of the Isaac wells with debt. Don't try to stop a man God has blessed. They fill it with debt. Now, one of the essential commodities that time was water because they live in a desert. Isaac has dug a well. Instead of taking the well, they fill it with water. And in the desert, you dig deep before you get away. It's not boho, it's manpower. You can go for 100 meters before you hit water. But these people work hard to fill the well with death. This were the wells that had been dug by the servant of his father Abraham. So he inherited it. Now look at it. But you can't stop a man. Finally, Abimelech ordered Isaac to leave the country. Go somewhere else. He said, for you have become too powerful for us. Whole nation. A whole nation. This is, oh, you are not understanding what I'm talking about. Do, are you ready for a blessing? This is what, this is going to be your story. You become too powerful for your father's house. Too powerful for your mother's house. Too powerful for your environment. Wherever you live, people will envy you. You are in Dansuma, you left to Asama, they envy you. You came to East Legon, they envy you. You locate to America, they envy you. You are in Britain, they envy you. Because the aroma of favor and blessing, the empowerment to become. If it is not there, it's not there. But if it's there, it's there. And whilst I'm preaching, it is there. I understand this one. Hallelujah. I understand this one. I understand this one. I understand this one. When God started blessing me so much, I couldn't explain a lot of things. People show me favor. Strange one. Strange, strange. Strange. One day I was sitting in a place, somebody gave me a Rolex watch. I didn't even know the watch was Rolex. I thought all watches are watch. I dashed the watch before I find out that that is how much it costs. This is about 20 years ago. Think about it. Empowerment for blessing. You wake up one day, you realize that everything is changing. You pass your favor, you pass your favor, you pass your favor, you pass your because the empowerment is coming. I see a generational blessing is beginning this night because the curse is cancer. Hey, when the blessing start, delay stops. I said, delay comes to an end. Amen. Marital delay, childbirth delay, financial delay, Jesus. promotion delay, visa ha, ha, delay. Ha, 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 ha. Everything comes to an end. Amen. And then there is an acceleration on the blessing. Amen. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Yeah. And, praise. Bless him. and this t-shirt that the Lord showed me, don't print only white, print different colors. Yes, sir. Wow. Because say some people, there's a particular color that is connected to them. Mm. God will say, gold, mm. white, silver, different colors. Yes, sir. Different colors. Different colors. Amen. We will share some free and some too, because it's not easy money. Yes, yes, yes. Do you know that the last time the T-shirt you have there, the one these guys wearing, Miracle Science and Wonders, cost us close to three hundred thousand. Yeah, but it's producing miracles. Miracles. A woman came to me crying. He said that, Papa, I'm going to America. Please give me one of this mantle. I said, Why? He said, Do you know the first mantle you said? Anne Roberts came to my house twice. They couldn't stay. One of them looked at the mantle and say, Let's go back. He said, Why? Don't you see that thing there? That handkerchief is catching fire. Let's go. He told me the story. I know a story of Am Roberts that went to somebody's house, and the person starts speaking in tongues. The robber head say, Hey, please. Put everything down. Let's go. Even the things you are still from others, let's live in this. I say, why? He said, the woman went to school with my sister. So it's called tongues and interpretation. When we were speaking in tongues, God interpreted in the years of the armed robber that your sister Abu Ajua was my classmate. Hey. Oh, you are, I thought if I'm in Nigeria, somebody will shout like that. Now, when the blessing comes, strange miracles will begin to happen. Strange encounters, strange deliverance. Strange.
approved and somebody shout and receive it. All this, they hate you, they sit on your promotion, you are not empowered. No, what empowerment can this week you will be empowered. No, forget about it. Hallelujah. They will dig deep, they will find nothing. Hallelujah. The devil will use them and nothing will happen. No, you cannot curse a man God has blessed. There is nothing you can do to bring them down. You are digging your grave, hating people God has blessed. I'm telling you, if they tell you in the office to hate somebody, God has bled, write letters. Every letter is a death sentence on you. I'm telling you by prophetic word. I'm telling you. No. I, 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 I have seen it happen, 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 happen. Hey, when I be so Benson that was there, some people hated him. One day, they formed something to take him to court. And they were trying to find a way to jail him. He sat in the court and he said, if need be, God will intervene. The judge died. They brought another judge died. The case after the door, judge sat on it. Will you try? Everybody died. Amen. One day he was in America, and some people did the coup. They said they've excommunicated him from the church. Some six decades. They said from now, he is, he, they are the board. They said they sack him. Our bishop lifted it. I've forgotten what exactly he said. Who? That day, I think three of the decades died. Some of them with their children. Because there was a covenant to have Bishop Benz in the house, and you don't touch him. See, God raised him at the time where there was a lot of witchcraft on the land at Benin City. And he silenced all of them. The church that he built, the, he, he was building his church. Huh? There, was, uh, there, was, uh, there was this um, witch doctor, like a malam, uh, not malam, like a fetish priest. He told him, he said, over my dead body will you be there? That bishop said, show shall be the next day the man died. <laughs> Straight, powerful, instant results. <laughs> no, he said, when you are blessed, when you say it, heaven backs it. Yeah. Are you getting what I'm talking about? When you get blessed, no witch will fly above your roof. Yeah. Because I will curse them that curse you. I will curse them that curse you. I will, even if you lost a child, the next one will be three places. Yeah. Your army is too weak for what I'm talking about. All the people that are blessed, they cannot explain it. If it's from God, the good thing about the blessing, you see, I'm showing you something. Finally, Abimelech ordered Isaac to leave the country. Now, look at this. Now, let me, I can make my point now. Look at the blessing that is explained that. This blessing that nations are envying. Nations. Esau and Jacob was not eyeing this. They were eyeing the West. Do you know that when Jacob ran away from his brother, all this money was there for Esau, but he was not interested. You are the only one chasing properties for them to kill you. This stupid car that your father left, you people are fighting. Opair and conquer. And then you are just chasing. Is there no pair like that? No, there's one. Find it. Google it. Google and conquer and find it. It's not as good as I say, Google it. One day my son came from school and I told him that he said he wants shirt. I said, go to my wardrobe and find one of my He went there and said, that I don't like all your shirts. I said, why? He said, it's not the kind of shirt that I like. Then I realized that his generation don't wear the shirt I wear. No, he said, bless. His generation don't wear the shirt I wear. If you want to wear your father's shirt, you are not blessed. <laughs> For what? <laughs> Do you know blessing? I'm going to bring you to the place that when God really bless you, it doesn't change. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Look at the way he explained this in the New Testament. He said, a good man leaves inheritance for his children's children. That means Abraham left something for Isaac and Jacob. These people don't fight what this one has. He rather leave it for them. So, when, oh, there is something about blessing. It transcends your time. It goes. And it's not just the money. It's the, it's the spirit. So, you see, Jacob left his father's house with a pillow and a staff. He came as a nation. Hey! When the guy was coming back, he was loaded. I'm telling you, seriously. She was a wealthy man. He left. When he went to bed, he slept on a stone. He didn't even have anything like a pillow. 
He was holding a stick and a small oil that he poured to make a covenant. If you take me to my uncle's house, give me food to eat and clothe me and return, I'll give you 10% of everything I have. Naked, the guy came. He returned as a nation. In fact, Laban's children said that all our father's wealth has been transferred. But Laban was a lie because Laban said, I've learned by experience that God has blessed me for your sake. That is why I said that if you stay with a cursed person, you'll be cursed. But if you stay with a blessed person, Let me show you the symptoms of generational blessing. Do you know that blessing? Eh? When the blessing left, eh, the blessing somehow was with Joseph. Joseph carried to Potiphar's house. And Potiphar learned by experience that he was the least of the seven. He made him the head. Even in prison, he became one of the prison officers. And from there, he landed him. So you see, when the blessing comes, eh, they try to put you down. You can never go down. Hey! I learned something. The most mysterious scripture I, 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 I saw when the people were slaves in Egypt is that the more they oppress them, the more they multiply. How can oppression naturally does not bring multiplication? The Bible said the more they oppress them, the more they multiply. Because you can't oppress somebody with a prophetic blessing. It's not possible. You are wasting your time. Now rather, rather identify with that person and promote them. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm preaching you. I want to show you something. All this blessing that God, because you are the only one chasing money and you are not chasing blessing. No. If me and you, eh, we will not be idle. You come and say, hey, then where's, or say, then receive the deal from above, and then deal. <laughs> For you have become too, this is a president telling an individual that when we get, it, we check our GDP. You are more powerful than us. Your income, your st- I mean, we can, we can attest it. We can see that you are too powerful. And they told him that get out of us. Now, if you keep on reading, the man they sack later, they chase. Let's go down. Let's read. Let's read. Let's read slow. So Isaac moved away to, 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 to the Giria Valley where he set up their tent and settled down. Watch this. He reopened the words of his father. He reopened the words his father had done which the Philistines has failed in after Abraham's death. Isaac also restored the names Abraham had given to them. Everything the guy touches black. Isaac's servant also dug in the Giria Valley and discovered a well of fresh water in the desert. Watch this. But when the shepherd from Gilead came and claimed the spring, this is our water, they said, and they argue over it with Isaac, his men. So Isaac named the word Isaac, which means argument. And what happened there? Huh? Isaac men then dig another well. So the, the, these people also came to sack him. But again, there was a dispute over it. So Isaac named it Sitna, which means hostility. They tried to stop the man. It's unstoppable. Abandoning that one, Isaac moved on and dug another well. This time there was no dispute over it. So Isaac named the place Rehoboth, which means. May the Lord give you an open space. May the Lord give you an open space. Open space. Open space. Open space. No restriction. God has made room for us. God has made room for us. May the Lord make room for you. No, tomorrow I want to minister to you in a very I felt strong prophetic anointing. Isaac named the place Rehobo, which means open space. For he said, At least, at last, the Lord has created enough space for us to prosper in this land. Wow, let's keep reading. Watch this, watch it. From there, Isaac moved to Bathsheba. And what happened there? Where the Lord appeared unto him the night of his arrival. I am the God of your father. He's introducing himself, Abraham. He said, do not be afraid, for I am with you. And I will bless. After all this, you are going to bless him again? Hey! Look at your neighbor and say, hey, you haven't seen anything yet. Say it in slang. Say, you haven't seen anything yet. No, no, this one that you are envying. The people that are envy us, go and tell them that we have not started. We have not started. We have not started. There is nothing you can do about it. I, I, are you getting what I'm talking about? Oh, I love some answers you were not seeing given. I know this is a blessing. Oprah Winfrey will interview and say that you live in about 12, is it 12 or 32 million house? He said, there's nothing I can do. Oprah, it's just the blessings of God. Hallelujah. I said, that's a blessing. If, he said that if you come and kick me out of that house, then why you come and see we'll be bigger than this one? Hallelujah. 
the blessings of the Lord. There's nothing. You will die for free. Never attack people God is blessing. This man keeps sleeping and sleeping. Something is seriously wrong with this guy. Jesus Christ. He needs a blessing. Wow. Is he married? Are you married? Your wife doesn't let you sleep. My goodness. Please anoint his wife for me. Where the Lord appeared to him on the night. Officer, he said, I am I'm the God of Father. Somebody that nations are envy. God say, I'm going to bless you. Hey! What's happening? So the other one is what? It is that God is saying, all the ones that they envy you have not started with you. Hey! May that become your story. Hey! I know I say, for I am with you and I will bless you. Hey, baby, I will multiply your descendants and they will become great in this. I will do this because of my promise to Abraham, my servant. So listen, you are a product of your ancestors. That is what today, any wrong blood, any wrong trace of a curse that is coming from your father's house, we permanently disconnect you from Amen. it. Amen. And may the Lord start a generational blessing with Amen. you. Amen. Do you know why I can do this? The generational blessing didn't start from Terah. It started with Abraham. That means there was a disconnection between Terah and Abraham. And there was a connection from Abraham's generation. So where a generational care stops, a generational blessing begins. Amen. Oh man, I'm talking to somebody here. May a generational blessing begin from now. Amen. This is the warming up of the generational blessing. Amen. When I get deeper, you will understand. Jesus. So don't sit there and be talking slants and your ignorance. Oh, he, all this case is pretty. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, Christ has redeemed. You think I don't know? You think I don't know? You think I don't know? I can't preach a blessing when I've not preached you about the case. Because the blessing can make you start misbehaving. If you don't know what the case can do. The only way you protect the blessing is to know that when I slip out of this place, I will land into something I cannot handle. So I better discipline myself to stay here. Because blessing eh, has its own challenges. When God gives you money, you can see beautiful women. When you are poor, you don't see them. Poverty is blindness. Money can tell you, oh, this girl is a nice lady. This girl is a nice... When you are poor, you don't even look around. You cannot be a humanizer if you don't have money. That is why God curses humanizers. You check them. It's not enough. Eh? There are some people there. Eh? There are some names you know in Ghana, they are blessed. After they die, it is dead. That means it's not a generational blessing. We are not talking about you making money and your children suffering. That's not what we are talking about. It's not, it has nothing to do with inheritance. They don't need it. Jacob never needed anything from his father. He returned as a nation. Straightforward. So we are talking about words pronounced on you that has become an aroma that attracts favor. Oh, Jesus Christ. Whatever place your soul of your feet in land, something begins to happen. No. And the blessing must not be just your environment. That means that it must be an aroma. When you travel to America, it must show up. In London, it must show up. If you look at this guy, he was in he was in Abimelech's land, Philistine. She went to uh, Isaac, and then from there he moved to Bathsheba. Everywhere you go, there was heaviness. Like, let me show you something. He has moved to Trey Town, where the Lord came and said, I will multiply you, and you will become great in nation, and I will do because of my servant Abraham. Keep going. Watch this. I want you to. Then Isaac built an altar there and worshiped the Lord. These people, they are dangerous. <laughs> he raised an altar. He set up his camp at that place because God has spoken to him there and his servant dug another well. One day, King Abimelech came from Gilead with his advisors. One of them is called what? Ahuzaf. May tender fire that guy. And also, Fiko. I know you have an idea. My first boy will be called Fiko. His army commander. Hey! 
Why have you come? Isaac brothers say, why have you come here? What is it? Isaac asked. You obviously hate me since you kick me off your land. The people have not come. He has moved to another place. They chase him. Now listen to what they They reply. We can plainly see that the Lord is with you. <laughs> I wish I'm in Nigeria. The shouting will be stronger than this one. Only Ghanaians will hear this. Hey, from today, they will see that the Lord is with you. The witches in the form, they will see the Lord is with you. Amen. When I finish with you and release your generational blessing, Jesus. and you wear your generational blessing dress. Yes, Lord. Jesus. Yeah. This is not Nobody told them. They st- from a distance, they can still smell the thing. They were hearing the rumor. The guy was in his secret. They said, I can't be the one. They said, we can see. We can, we, reply, we can plainly see that the Lord is with you. So we want to enter into a sworn treaty. Let's read the King James Version. We okay, can be some be. And they said, we saw certainly that the Lord was with thee. And he said, let there be, be now an oath between us, even between us and thee. And let us make a covenant with you. These guys, they are very smart. Abimelech saw that he has sacked the wrong man. Because some people, when you sack them, you start going hungry. Uh, I won't mention your name, but I have you think about it. I'm coming to my show. I'm coming to my show. Jimmy Sam. Jimmy Sam, she's a buffet. Come on, when she swaba. No, be any problem. It's not every woman you marry and you sack. It's not every man you marry and you want to divorce him. You will suffer because the reason for your favor is the man. Yeah. Don't say, Adena, I push you. No. Something from your background is pushing you. They want to bring you back into the case. Don't leave the man. Hey, it's a matter of time. It can take you 20 years to love somebody. Manage this. Manage it. I mean, step out of self-centeredness. Step out of selfishness. Pay the price. There's no victory without a battle. The man that you think is useless tomorrow can be a contact for something. Hey, be careful. Hallelujah. People withdraw from here and show you that if you step out of the blessing and join the case, you will die with the case. Jonathan has no business. I call it soul suicide Jonathan's judgment. Jonathan's judgment was wrong to connect to his father's soul. He should have stayed with David. Now, you see, because the thing is a blessing, and Jonathan missed it, he went to Mephibosheth. Because once the thing is a blessing, David became restless. Is there anybody in the house of Jonathan I can bless? Because the covenant is peace speaking. And they brought that crippled boy, Mephibosheth. And Mephibosheth sat at the king's table. Are you getting what I'm talking about? So be careful you don't die, you don't kill yourself because of your carelessness. No. No. Never try to think that the marriage you are sitting there, when you marry that guy, you'll be happy. That foolish boy in the office. Can you hear me? Oh, here's that guy we here. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, yeah. All oh, the ladies here, they are angry. They are, they are what I'm saying, uh, the person is saying. The guy that is just, he's not like a mokia. Look at the way he's walking. I don't just again, it is a fact. A lot of people are in church misbehaving. They are spiritually blind. Some of you have no sensitivity and you cannot read things in the spirit. I'm telling you, you cannot read things in the spirit. Look at this stupid guy, Potiphar, who put Joseph in prison. Later, he saluted him. Now, I don't know. God was quiet and silent about that thing. But if Potiphar was still alive, when Joseph became, Joseph became a prime minister, then now he has to give the man he put in prison a standing ovation. God, did it. God doesn't care about that story, but it would be a very terrible story. He was the captain of the guard. He must produce bodyguards for his, his former slave boy. It's not a ruler. 
God can turn the tables. Yeah. 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 I say God can turn the tables. All those who are looking down on you, God will turn the tables. And they will see that they made a mistake. Nothing is worse than coming to control somebody you used to undermine. And now you don't have a choice. You must control the man. Generational blessing. Generational blessing. Huh? This before I've come to beg. So, but you know, I love something about being man. He's a very humble man. If it's you, you never beg. Never will you beg. You come back, hey, I mean, I mean, you're cheap. You would die in your pride. In your pride. The, 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 the strength of the prodigal son is his humility and sense of meekness. I don't deserve to be called one of your sons. Make me a servant. And a party was thrown for him. Parties, supernatural parties only come to those who are humble. They can despise the shame. Now, nah. why you buried, buried, and contagious, contagious, and buried? Just go to your wife and say, "Honey, I am sorry." Hey, has it happened to you before? There is nothing like you are fighting your wife, and the night you want to fire, and you can't go. Has it happened to you before? Hey. It has happened to me. Me watch your chinako pocket was wrong. Wrong with Jimmy Seven Hour. I don't know. You can't go because why you be be bar barry? I was going there to something. You say free all. What is going on here? The devil was talking. The Lord said, "Beg, beg." I say, "Wake up." What happened here? Said, "I'm, I'm, I'm sorry." Easy to be a man, no. That's a pride. Then I saw why pride brought the devil from hell. Yes, yes, yes. He took him from heaven to hell straight. And now grow. Hey! Oh, Danam Hosu to be coming with. Why you bowing out the whole bowing shows? No, Bosam Yakuba Sabas and Oyos, you a Jimmy Sempa. God will insult you. Lift up your two hands. May the Lord give you a sense of humility. We need humility. We need this serious. That's a pride. It's a very dangerous disease. Some, some people must just say, I'm sorry. Do you know the word I'm sorry can save a lot of money from going to divorce court? A, lo a lot of the cases in divorce court, I'm sorry could have saved the marriage. But contentious and barracious. I cannot say sorry. It doesn't go anywhere. It cannot get, it cannot cross this ceiling. As if I'm telling you, people have died because of pride. People have destroyed their destiny because of pride. People have broken promises, relationship, promising relationship. That has a glorious future. Pride has knock it down. I'm telling you the truth. Hallelujah. Pride. You are hungry. Your husband has money. You are pride. You can't say, hey, all of us will come to your funeral. We will be there. If I'm the one but I say, foolish pride lady die. Ashes to ashes. Say, May you die in the ashes again. It's there. That foolish is, is all over the system. People are dying because of, I say, listen, in the midst of perfection, pride make a glorious Beautiful angel became Lucifer. Satan. He said, You are the anointed cherub that covered. He said, You were perfect in the day you were created until iniquity is found in you. The word iniquity there in the Hebrew means pride. I will ascend my throne above the Musa. How can the creator, the creation ascend above the creator? It's foolishness. Mm. Can you imagine the first school in the universe was done by a chorister? Mm. Eh? Michael Dems were there. 
Do you know something? When the devil misbehaved, Michael fired him. And Jesus said, he came like a lighting. I beheld Satan fall like a lighting. So when Michael fired him, in a twinkle, they brought him down. That is the chief of defense staff. You are dealing with powers that be. God didn't even come to see. God called the phone and said, Mike, are you there? That guy is misbehaved. He's old. Lord, oh, 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 I see. Let me go and check. By the time God came, he was down. <laughs> Michael sent him down. So when Daniel prayed and he, he stopped uh, Gabriel, he said that, that one of the prince, Michael, I'm sure the moment the, the prince of kingdom saw Michael, he said, call Daniel. He said, he said, he said Gabriel, go, 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 go. Because Papa will be free. I won't become a demon again. May your enemies meet your God, the Colise. Stand to your feet and lift up your two as we are going to pray. Hallelujah. Tomorrow I want to minister to you in a very special way. But look at your neighbor and say, do you want to walk in a generational blessing? Do you want to walk in a generational blessing? Kill the pride. Kill, kill the, the pride. pride. Kill it. Kill, kill, kill the pride. Kill, kill, kill the pride. Learn from, learn from Abimelech. Learn from all those guys. They came to Abimelech and they established a covenant with us. Now, do you know something? The smartness of the covenant is that we want to be partaker of your blessing. Because when we enter into covenant with people there, what they have is yours. And what you have is there. That's what it is. They came to tap into the guy's blessing. Because when the guy left their place, the economy shifted. They went straight to recession. And they came back and they, they traced the thing and said, no, the guy will sack. The guy will sack. The guy will sack. Let's go back and beg. It, that, is, that, is the, that is the spirit of humility. No, I was developing a message. I call it the DDDS. The, 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 the four strong key Satan use. Mm-hmm. Huh? Discouragement. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, I won't tell you because if I tell you. Uh, uh, I, I will preach it. Sunday, that's the message I'm going to preach. If you're able to overcome that thing, uh, you put the devil behind you. The weapons. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The last word, the last essay is called suggestion. Every attack of the devil is a suggestion. It's a suggestion. She never will push you. It's a suggestion. Even at the Garden of Eden, he suggested. He told them, you can eat if you eat, you won't die. It's a suggestion. It's a suggestion. And I'm going to preach it and show you that. It's a suggestion. The day you find the cage was a suggestion. Every sin is a suggestion. No, the greatest battle is a mental battle. That is where the greatest, the most difficult deliverance is mental deliverance. No. Hallelujah. So, the, the two D's, I will tell you, I've mentioned one D. There are two D's more because if I mention all, you won't come. Yeah. So the two, but I've given you the S. Every attack is a suggestion. Even the things I'm preaching, Satan can suggest. There is no case on you. Do, you. do you think there's a case? No. Suggest. What do you think about this lady? Don't you think it's nice? Think about it. And under suggestion, I will give you 33 of his mental suggestions. Metro suggests. He suggests. And then he makes sure he gets you to do it. Straight. Amen. And then I will define the word opinion. Anytime you want to stay by your opinion, you're not ready to obey God's word. (laughs) It's a powerful message. Today God gave me that message fresh when I wake up at 2 o'clock and I was praying. And I was sitting in my prayer room and I, I took a pen and I started writing. I was dealing with something that I was saying, hey, 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 boy. Deal with the devil's suggestion. Suggestion. So, the day, he said, don't say you are sorry. If you do that, you are the husband, you are cheap. It's a suggestion to keep you in pride. Wow. Now, when you stay with your opinion, you are out of God's way. Wow. And I will define opinion in two statements. And if you're able to conquer this one, you have rendered the devil powerless. Today, God give me a major weapon I've not seen for over 30 something years. How to handle the devil? He said, Most of the deliverance has not come out. And then I like what God said lies. He said, You deserve to be free. Mm. 
You deserve to be free from all satanic crutches and chains and bondages. You deserve to be free. And the final page of the message is that you deserve to be free. You deserve to be free from financial bondage. You deserve to be free. You deserve to be free. But you have to check this 40 DDDS. I'll show you. No, no, suggestion, suggestion, suggestion. He will suggest to you right now. Greatest weapon. He will, he will make a suggestion and sit back and wait for your action. And you repeat, did God say you shouldn't eat the fruit? Oh, wow. God knows that when you eat, you become like him. He doesn't want anybody to become like him. What do you think? But we say, if so, means that the suggestion has worked. The man wants to give you a lift. Go with him. When I was studying the message, one of the greatest weapons I saw that he suggests things that he say, he can suggest to you that little fornication is not harmful. You are not the only one who has done it. Others have done it. Even though you are married, you are not the only one who has committed adultery. If your husband, he, he is not strong in the bed, try other sources and see so that you can make comparisons. <laughs> Suggestion. Oh, that is what so women have such children. Some of the children are not for their husband. Today there was even a story that came. A story like that. A man's two children was not his children. Straight. Two kids was not his children. Pastor, a pastor called me. One of my sons was telling me, said, Papa, something has happened. A man traveled and came back. The house they live in, the two children were for the landlord. Sure. <laughs> a pastor told me today, God is my eternal witness. The landlord. Utia rent, no fire. Utia rent, no fire. Utia rent, no fire. Lift up your two hands. Mm. Also, I know shit. When they took their children as if they are going to do something, went to do DNA test, came back and told the woman, Who are the father? I said, You are your children. I can't say, Madam, let's talk about this thing before you can show him the DNA. He started crying. Who are the, all the two is for Lalo. The Lalo is called, it's called Mate. Uh, uh, are you the only Mate in the world? Today, a pastor called me. Pastor Martin knew the pastor. He was telling me, he said, Papa, hmm. wow. No. <laughs> and this kind of stigma and label eh, is stay on you for life. Society will never forgive you. And even the children, if nothing is broken, they don't serve God where it will affect them. And then you know, you're German, the devil suggests that you're a nice guy. Even this guy doesn't deserve you. Look at how nice you are. Eh? The other man that is chasing, what do you think? Suggestions. Suggestions. You make a mistake for marrying him. If you look at the way he walks, he doesn't walk away. The other guy, when he picks you, you see his garlics. And you are there. Suggesting. Suggestions. <laughs> I'm, as if I'm prophesying. Yes. <laughs> I've, I've been prophesying all these years. So people don't take, I'm the, yeah, this message don't make it for anything. <laughs> you see, God can give me a word there, then it will stick into my head. The way He detects the thing, even though I've not preached it, even as, the way I'm hearing, that's the way I'm talking about. That's what Reverend Sue said. You, you prophesy through your preaching, than calling people's name. He said, no. He told you what he said, no, no. He prophecy is through his preaching. He can preach a message. He said, one day he came to Boga, he did something. Everybody was afraid. The person you stand in, the statement you are saying, and the things you are preaching, everything is about the person. Papa no told you, and who was say, yeah. And you could see that you don't know what you are doing, but we can tell that. He said, hey, he said, Ben, this thing. And he said, the good thing is that when we finish that meeting, then we all come to the, we finish the meeting, then we all come to the program and we start preaching. So it's not like somebody spoke to you. So it was very obvious that this was God. <laughs> Tell your neighbor suggestion, suggestion, suggestion. We break the curse of suggestions over your. Sorry, Amen.
<laughs> have I preached today? Are you blessed? Ah, well, for, sir. Introduction of generational ah, blessing. Ah, God, ah, Hallelujah ah, to Jesus. Give the Lord a praise. Ah, 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 oh, yo, 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 yo. Lift up your two and pray in the Holy Ghost, Lord. Everything I must do to step in the generation of the division. Everything I must do. Everything. Lord, help me. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, give me all the grace. Lift your voice and declare that generational curses are over. Today I stop into a generational blessing. I receive the empowerment to be blessed. The divine empowerment to be blessed. Put my word in the mouth of your servant from tomorrow. Somebody watching online, lift your two hands and pray. Somebody watching online, pray. Pray, 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 pray. Your two hands of prayer. Generational blessing. I 
prophesy over you. I release the blessings of divine prosperity. I release the blessings of divine prosperity. Lift up your voice and pray. Divine prosperity and abundance. Divine prosperity and abundance. I release the blessing of divine prosperity and abundance. I release the blessing of innovation. The blessing of divine prosperity and abundance. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I receive grace. 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 I release the blessing of supernatural healing and wholeness into your life. The blessings of supernatural healing, the blessings of wholeness from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Hey, when the blessing comes, the sickness will be out of your system. I release the 
blessings of divine prosperity and abundance. I release the blessing of supernatural healing and wholeness. Oh, Shadaba, Tuesday for follow. I release the blessings of creativity and innovation. The blessings of creativity. When I say boss, follow. Oh, Shadaba. The blessings of creativity and innovation. Everybody come to the altar. Test the boss, follow. Wherever you are, wherever you are sitting, make sure you come to the altar. something about the blessing it must be activated yes, sir. so when you saw god pronounce even god eh have you noticed that let us make man in our image after our liking tomorrow i'll show you something it's probably one of the most important scripture in the bible <laughs> that scripture transcends everything when god said let us make man in our image it means that he's going to bring out something that is going to be superior to anything he has created. And the Lord blessed them and said, be fruitful. It means he activated some Jesus. Your blessing must be activated. Amen. Sometimes it can go dormant. It must be activated. Amen. And don't forget, the prophetic blessing is worse. Yes. Everything about blessing. All Isaac gave to Jacob was worse. Hey, let me show you the power of a blessing. Jacob took his Ephraim and Manasseh and said that the children are mine. And today I have taken them as one of my children. Mm. And because he pronounced that God must put them in the twelve and take two out. Yeah. Ruby was cursed. He made Levite the priest mm. and put Manasseh and Ephraim in child. Because a man said. So tomorrow when I bless you, you'll be blessed. Yeah. Now number one, it's based on the revelation of what God gave me to preach. An example of the evidence of the fact that God by his son brought me to this bush and he has made it what it is. Based on these two authorities, I can pronounce a blessing on your life. And if you believe it, you see manifestation. Now to what I'm going to show you that the previous blessing, that means that this is the power of a blessing. Where you end is where your children begins. Let me put it in a better way. Your ending is a starting point of your children. 
Let me put this in a way you understand. Your roof becomes their platform. Amen. <laughs> that means that if it's well with you than your children, then something is wrong. That is why some of the people, they took church from their father and they make it bigger than their fathers because of the platform in which they stand. Amen. So, when we activate the blessing, the sky will be your limit. Now, listen. There is another dimension. It must become intercontinental. That means that when Philistines kick you and you go to Isaac, you must not struggle. When you move to Bathsheba, you must not struggle. You must go such a way that those who sack you will come and look for you. Your army should be louder than this one. That means that God forbid, I don't expect it to happen. But just in case a man you are married say you will marry you again, he must regret after six months. That means that when people disconnect from you, they must come back. And acknowledge they made a mistake. And that is the sign and the symptoms of the blessing. If they move out of you and they see you and they are laughing, then it means that your blessing is not activated yet. No. Nobody must leave you and not regret. It's activation of the blessing. Amen. So tomorrow, come here with an expectation. And if God give you permission, I'll prophesy on everybody. So listen, the prophecy I'm not going to talk about is not calling you and say your grandmother is a witch. That one you have heard. Ah. Let me tell you something. Your grandmother's witchcraft will not put money in your pocket. The blessing will lift you above grandmother's witchcraft. When the blessing comes, the witches will be as if they don't exist. They don't exist. They don't exist. The blessings of the Lord took a man to a palace he was wanted. Moses was a wanted on the list of Egypt. He went and said, let my people go. Mysterious one. When the word is pronounced, it's settled. Are you getting it? Yes, Exodus chapter 7. See, it's one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. Exodus chapter 7. And the Lord said to Moses, see, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh. So don't be afraid of him. And Aaron, because every God needs a prophet, Aaron shall be your prophet. So Moses approached a Pharaoh as a God, not as a man. That is why you couldn't be touched. Because the prophetic blessing that came is, I've made you a God to Pharaoh. So Moses didn't approach Pharaoh as a man. Because of the powers that back Pharaoh, you have to be a God to face him. Because his magician can turn rod to serpents. So you must approach him as a God. That means that you are walking in another realm. God says, see, Moses, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh, and Aaron shall be your prophet. So the way God speaks through prophet, Moses was speaking through Aaron. And he entered Egypt as a God. And he was a superior God to all the gods of Egypt. So nobody can touch him. So watch this. Don't give too much attention to the witchcraft in your family. You will rise above them by the blessing. You know, labor has all kinds of gods in their home, but they couldn't stop Jacob's blessing. Even riches stole some of the gods, but the gods cannot stop Jacob. Because he walk in the superior realm of a god. Are you getting it? So watch this. When your time has not come, then you think the witches are strong. But if your time comes, they don't exist. No, they don't exist. I will not be standing here thinking about some witch from where for what? No, you can't even greet me and leave. No, no, no. They even send you won't come. Hallelujah. You should be wiser than that. What kind of foolish witchcraft is that? No. Are you getting it? Yes. <laughs> so the blessing must be activated. Yeah. When you get activated, all this I'm looking for bank statement to go for embassy. It's not a blessing. It's not a blessing. The way you are changing your one passport, you are called, you are a man, but you are called Akushan Ponsa. One passport, you are called Yakari. Uh, then another passport to your name. And then, I mean, you, you have 10 passports. No. When the blessing comes in, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 
Finally, let me say this. When the blessing is activated, you don't fight for titles. You don't need it. Because I will make your name great. Name. 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 I will make your name great. So, when, when God starts blessing you, it affects the name. 5,000 years beyond. There is nobody who doesn't know the name Abraham. No. Imagine Abraham, if you become born again today, you know that name. No. That is why Americans don't even bother themselves. You can't hear say President, you say Barack Obama. But the name is a carry with. Never say Bishop Billy Graham. He doesn't need it. When you hear Billy Graham, unless you are not in the body. You don't need, you don't, I'm not saying titles are wrong. Yeah. Take the titles, but think about the name. Yeah. Are you getting what I'm talking about? No. Hallelujah. So once, once you hear the name, your title can be there, but your name is buried. Yeah. And title don't make waves. It's name that make waves. Yes, name, 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 name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> are you getting the blessing now? Lift up your two hands and thank God. Some of you, when somebody called you and didn't have reverend, then you are angry. Please, don't just call me. Call me Reverend Jackie. That is my name. At Bishop Jackie. Then you say, hey. Then you are there. There's nothing wrong with that. And the very reverend. Eh? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, very soon I'm going to cancel the name you call me prophet. I just want you to call me God's servant. Simple. God seven and I say books are there. That's all. Amen. <laughs> ah, amen. amen. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Yes, you are blessed. Oh. Amen. Tomorrow, eh, let's activate the thing. Today we have laid the foundation. Let's build on it. I'm going to preach a message you have never heard in your life. Wow. The, the generational blessing, but today God gave me 12. I preach that one. I will go to that. I'll start from the book of Genesis. Mysterious scripture. Hallelujah. Amen. Once it comes, it has come. Forget it. You will travel to abroad with rubber bag and come with containers. Oh, it's a blessing. You went with the rubber bag, politic bag, and you are coming with containers of the blessing. That is what happened to Jacob. He returned as a nation. As a nation, enjoying himself. Amen. Today, Bill, her uh, friends say, uh, Rachel has given him a servant. Yes, sure, if you wake up, Jacob, the women are lining up. God of Jacob. Who's there? The God of Jacob. I can't wait too much. <laughs> ah! <laughs> the blessing. Rachel gave him a uh, handmaid. Leah gave him. Hey! They were just, the guy was just enjoying himself. And God was blessing the man. Uh, Try it. Try it. You will die. Coo -coo -coo -coo. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you want to? Some people call scriptures and they did that. And Jacob has two wives. We are going to have one. Oh, hallelujah. You have, to, you have to interpret scripture with scriptures. You see, the people were giving their wife divorce. Because Moses right? Jesus came and said, in the beginning it was not so. So you see, you can, be, you can walk under God's permissible way. And everything about permissible will is temporal. It's not a permanent blessing. It's the perfect will of God that is a blessing. Mm. So God has given you a king, but you suffer under the king because you have rejected him. That is what he said. So make sure you are not in a permissible will. You are in the perfect will of God. And that is what the blessing gets. You cannot be blessed and marry a wrong man. No, 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 no. Even if you marry a wrong man, you are blessed. It will turn the wrong man to be a good man. Yes. There is something about blessing. And then on Thursday, we ship it to what to do to make it go on your children. Amen. That means that some of you will speak to your womb. Yes. And the unborn children will receive it. Yes. How do I know that before I formed thee in the womb, I knew thee? So there is something you can put a prophetic word in your womb to wait for your children before they get conceived. So by the time the children, by the time your husband's spermatosia fertilize your egg and enter your womb, a prophetic word is waiting for the child. 
So from the one to the time you push the child at the theater, push the child at the labor ward, is coming with the prophetic word. Are you getting the part? It's a dangerous thing. We are going to go to dimensions. Amen. It will shift your destiny. Amen. Suddenly things are happening. Amen. You are driving cars you didn't buy. Amen. You are living in houses you didn't build. Also, what you are walking one hour signing. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Amen. When the blessing is at you, can't reject prophecy. And the two super net house in care. Minimum be a what tiny womb. After a prophetic word has come, doctors tie his womb. When he became pregnant, because that is a brutal, you can see when he became pregnant, the womb was tied, but the baby was inside. Who said that a tie womb threatens God? Oh, sorry, child. God, don't try to threaten God about anything. The way God does his surgery, God, God's, God's theater is not the way you are going to recovery world. The first person that do surgery is God. He cut Adam by the side, pull his ring, finish, touch it, and say, go by your way. No recovery. God doesn't have a word. The way they finish now, you are healed and you are good. Yes. If you meet Adam, there's no scar. Yes, yes, yes. So see Adam, there is no scar that he has been operated. Yes, yes, yes. We take the children back and we give it to you. Amen. 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 The Lord bless you. Hallelujah to Jesus Christ. Now, I declare that um, as you sleep today, may you have an encounter. I have not finished preaching the generational care series. Maybe God will give me another because I have to step into Jerusalem. Blessing. But if there's anything God must show you, may it be revealed to you in a dream so that you can deal with it once and for all. But today, on this altar, we activate the blessing and the generational blessing. And may it affect every area of your life. All the cases are cancelled. A generational blessing has taken over. And may we begin to see the symptoms of the generational blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the almighty God lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. May he cover you with the blood. There will be no counter reaction. No more delays. Once the blood is activated, you can be 100 years and still conceive. Sarah was 90 years he conceived a child. No more delays. No more delays. May the Lord even backdate your years. Yeah. If you are in 70, may you look like you are 35. Yeah. If you are 40, may you look like you are 22. Yeah. May your youthful age be, re, be, be renewed in the name of Jesus. May all men be empowered. Yeah. Especially marriage men, may they be empowered yeah. to function in the maximum capacity. Yeah. May their wives be happy. We forbid any impotency. Amen. And we declare supernatural empowerment. Amen. And as God empowered the man, may he empower the woman to handle the stamina. In the name above every other name. Anybody that believes it, receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Tomorrow by this time, a testimony is in your mouth. God bless you. I love you. Get ready for tomorrow's encounter. Hallelujah. I love you. I love you. Are you getting blessed? Are you enjoying? Tomorrow morning we have a prayer session. Hallelujah. Make sure you are here. 10 o'clock. And then we continue. Amen. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you just as I am. I repent of all my sins. I ask you to forgive me. According to your word, I believe you died. I believe you were buried. I believe you rose on the third day. Now, Jesus, I invite you to come into my heart. Be my Lord and be my personal Savior. Write my name in the book of life. Help me to serve you all the days of my life. Fill me with your spirit in a covenant between me and the devil. From today, it is broken. It is destroyed. 
I am a new creature. I am born again. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. Amen.